COVID-19 vaccination is one of the most effective way to reduce the burden and the death caused by the COVID-19 virus itself. Unfortunately for some of us, we still have not registered or attended the vaccination even though we have given the date for the vaccination. As such, I would like to make three predictions in today's video. Prediction number one is that the COVID-19 virus itself will be regarded no longer as a pandemic but as an endemic virus and it will remain with us for some months and years to come. Number two, for those of us who have not been vaccinated, we will be infected and unfortunately some of us will regret not getting vaccinated or delaying the vaccination itself. In my opinion, there are two major categories of reason why people are delaying or refusing vaccination. Category number one are the issue in regard to sudden death or death following vaccination. These are the major issues that we would like to discuss today. Secondly is the issue in regard to the efficacy of the vaccine itself. The perceived lack of efficacy of the vaccine itself. Okay, There's a perception of lack of efficacy of the vaccine itself which might be driving some, some of us away from the vaccination. There are two major categories of death following vaccination. The first category are the deaths that occur following vaccination but has nothing to do with the vaccination itself. This is what we call coincidental sudden cardiac death syndrome. The death has occurred in someone who has been vaccinated but it has no relationship or connection at all to the recently received vaccination. The second category of deaths following vaccination are deaths that is directly related with the vaccination by itself or the vaccine itself has caused death in certain individuals. I would like to discuss first the issue of sudden cardiac death syndrome. Sudden death or sudden cardiac death is one of the most important cause of death in Malaysia and around the world. We all have seen, we all have heard, we all have read someone who is in a young age who have died either while playing sport, while acting. We have seen uh, actors, actors, athletes, politician and anyone else that we might know in, at our workplace or among our family members who have died suddenly, who are seemingly well just before they die. It is an extremely difficult issue to discuss because these people who died suddenly has been seen one or two hours prior to their death being perfectly well, denying any symptom or chest pain or breathing trouble. Okay, So it is quite stressful for those who are close to the person who just died suddenly. Obviously, we will look for answers and what we will do, we will make some connection with whatever the uh, person who has just died have done, eaten or recently performed procedure the last one or two days prior to the death. In general, there are two main causes of sudden death. Category number one is the problem arising from the circulatory system in our body. Number two is genetic or inherited disease that has affected the heart muscle causing sudden cardiac death syndrome. Gross majority of sudden death is caused by circulatory system or blood vessel supply to the heart or any other organ. The blood vessel system in our body arises from the heart and goes to everywhere in our body. The function of the blood vessel system is to take blood from the inner chamber of the heart to initially the heart muscle itself and subsequently to everywhere else in the body. There are two major issues that can arise from blood vessel system. This blood vessel, this piping system can be blocked or completely occluded or it can be torn or burst. The consequence of the blockage, the consequence of the burst in the blood vessel system is dependent on which organ it is involved. There are three major organs that is involved that could cause sudden cardiac death. These are the heart, brain and the lung. If you look at the images here, you can see that the blockage of the heart artery will lead to damage in the heart muscle and causes heart attack and subsequently sudden cardiac death. The blockage or the burst in the blood vessel system in the brain can cause acute and massive stroke. That could also cause sudden cardiac death. And thirdly, an example is the blockage of the artery going to the lung itself. If it is sufficiently big, it can also cause sudden death. This will apply to everyone who have died suddenly. The most common cause of sudden death among all these people is 
acute blockage of the heart artery. If you look at the statistic from Malaysian authority here, we can see quite clearly that the major cause of death in Malaysia in general is heart artery narrowing and blockage. There are reported 50 cases of death on daily basis that is directly caused by heart artery blockage. I made a simple calculation, okay? In 2018, before COVID-19 came, before COVID-19 vaccination came along, there were 32.4 million population in Malaysia. We know that 76.7% is above 15 years of age. And it's an important calculation because I would like to make assumption today that most or all of the heart attack that occurs in Malaysia causing deaths occur in above 15 years old. And I think that is a reasonable assumption to make. That will, that will come to at around 24.68 million of adult population that we have in 2018. We know that 50 deaths occur on daily basis among 24.6 million. Okay, so back of the envelope calculation, we can see quite clearly that there are estimated two deaths every 100,000 every day in Malaysia caused by heart attack. Combine that to the fact that we know that COVID-19 vaccination itself does not prevent or alter the risk of death. So if you combine these three facts all together, the first is that two person every 100,000 every day will die from heart attack. Number two, COVID-19 vaccination will not prevent heart attack or death. That is quite obvious. Number three, we have the third fact that we know that approximately 400 to 500,000 people will undergo vaccination in Malaysia. So if you combine all the three facts together, it is estimated that we will have around 20 people who have just received COVID-19 vaccination will die on that day. But please be reassured, they will die. They are dying because they were at risk of having heart attack. These are deaths related to sudden deaths or sudden cardiac deaths, which has nothing to do with the vaccination itself. Now I would like to discuss the second part. Perhaps the most difficult part is the death that is directly caused by the vaccination itself. Now I don't have data in Malaysia in regard to death following vaccination or deaths caused by vaccination, except we've got a statement here by the newly elected health minister saying that there is no vaccine-related death in Malaysia as yet. So I would like to turn my attention to another country. Australia, for example, is a big country with a rather small population in combination, fairly good health information system, somewhere I have been living for the last 20 years in my life in the past, therefore I will trust. There are three kinds of vaccination being used in Malaysia. The first two are also being used in Australia. We have Pfizer vaccination and AstraZeneca vaccine. Okay, these two are the two vaccines being used in Australia. We have Sinovac vaccination that is not available and that is not being used in Australia. AstraZeneca vaccine has reportedly caused seven fatalities. There are seven deaths in Australia that is caused by AstraZeneca vaccine itself out of six 0.8 million doses given. I would like to reiterate, in Australia, there are seven deaths that were directly related to AstraZeneca vaccination out of 6.8 million doses given. That will come up to approximately one in every million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine will lead to death. Now, I would like to give you some example. What does one in a million means? It is something that is not very tangible for most of us. Most of us will not be able to comprehend and understand what does one in a million means. All right? For example, the risk of you getting killed by a lightning strike is approximately two in a million. That is twofold higher compared to getting AstraZeneca vaccine. Okay? I'll give you an example for women. We regard pregnancy and give us something that is natural, that is not illness. But please do understand that women who are pregnant and give birth takes approximately 67 in a million risk of death. There is a background risk of death among women who give birth. And the background risk is approximately 67 in 1 million compared to the risk of AstraZeneca vaccine causing death is 1 in a million. In regard to the Pfizer vaccination, it's quite difficult because the data is not available yet. The risk of death from Pfizer vaccination, vaccination I will consider is much lower compared to AstraZeneca vaccination. In Australia, there are 9.4 million doses given to the population already resulting in no death from Pfizer vaccination because the mechanism of possible death 
caused by Pfizer vaccination is inflammation of the heart muscle. We call it myocarditis. Okay, although it has been reported in Australia, some mild cases of myocarditis, mild cases of heart muscle inflammation following Pfizer vaccination to date in August, there has not been any death from 9.4 million doses given. But in New Zealand, they have given 3.3 million doses of Pfizer vaccine. They reportedly one death. So, so far in New Zealand, there is one death from 3.3 million doses of Pfizer vaccination given. In other words, the risk of Pfizer vaccination causing death possibly or most likely is much lower than AstraZeneca vaccine, which itself is quite low anyway. Now, you have to understand in regard to heart muscle inflammation, if you're sitting at home minding your own business, the risk of you getting COVID-19 infection and subsequently COVID-19 virus related heart inflammation is approximately 450 in 1 million. I would like to conclude the video by restating the fact that although not perfect, COVID-19 vaccination is one of the best tools that we have to reduce the burden and the death from COVID-19 vaccination. Number two, I would like to reiterate that I suspect COVID-19 virus will be among us for a long time. We cannot get ourselves away from COVID-19 virus. And lastly, those who have refused, those who have delayed, those who have not been vaccinated somehow will regret their decision. Thank you very much.